Hello, welcome to Extraordinary Women TV with Shannon Skinner. I'm your host, and I'm joined by my guest, Crystal Wintels, who is the VP of Referral Institute Canada, uh, which is all about referral marketing, uh, which is what she's here to talk about today. So you can learn about uh, how referral marketing can help grow your business. Later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top success tip. You'll hear Crystal's. Welcome to the show, Crystal. Thank you very much. Thank nice you having much. you here. Thank now, you. you're the franchise um, national franchise partner and VP Operations Referral Institute Canada. You're also yep. a franchise owner uh, of BNI, which is um, Business Networking Institute. Is that right? Business Network International. International. Yep. Uh, so you do a lot of uh, networking and a lot of referral marketing. I do. I do for a long time. <laughs> Yeah, I know this is well, well let's talk about that today and okay. let's talk about uh, you know a little bit about your background and what people can learn uh, about referral marketing so that they can grow their businesses. So first let's talk about the Referral Institute of uh, Canada, Referral Institute Canada. What is it? Okay. Um, and people ask me that question all the time. Referral it's a good it, question. It is a good question. Referral Institute is a f training and facilitation company that is based upon a number of the books that the founder of Business Network International has written. So he's written, I believe now we're up to about 15, 20 of his books. And a number of years ago, probably about 12 years ago, he decided that there needed to be some training modules and some facilitation modules around a lot of this material because it really was sort of process oriented material. So through that developed in conjunction with a couple of other partners the Referral Institute. So the Referral Institute is um, public programming, it can be customized corporate programming, but it really does train salespeople for the most part or anybody who's responsible for building their own business, it trains them how to create a referral marketing plan. Now. I mean, how can we use referrals uh, to build our, uh, our you know, success as, as for a business or just for ourselves individually? I mean, how, how can we use referrals uh, for that? What's I the think, best way? I think the, I think the most difficult thing for a lot of people, especially people who are sole proprietors in business or people who are looking to generate um, new clients for their business, is they forget who they already know we tend to compartmentalize our business and our personal relationships and if we don't do that if we start to think about the people that we know and who they might know all of a sudden we realize we might just be a couple of introductions away from a really fantastic business opportunity but what happens I think with a lot of business people is a traditional sales model is that we meet a lot of people make a lot of calls get our face out there in front of as many people as we can as quickly as possible and hope for the best to some degree. Whereas if we think about the kind of people we'd like to have as clients and who's connected to those people, all of a sudden we're getting to the same destination but we're leveraging the relationships we already have. You know, I've been to a number of uh, networking events um, and some of them have been better than others. Um, I, don't, I often wonder if uh, how effective they are. I mean, I think that they're great for social reasons, um, but I do wonder, um, you know, how effective they are in terms of generating sales uh, for business people. In my experience, not effective at all. Yeah. And a lot of people go to a networking event like a Board of Trade event and they know there's going to be a lot of people there and I think the predominant objective is I'm looking to sell when I go to one of these events and it almost never ever happens. And people come away disappointed, they think, okay, you know, I wasted two hours of my time. But I think the challenge is that it's the wrong objective, right? Okay. If we go to a... So don't sell. Yeah, don't sell, ever, at a networking event. Right. Would be what I would, the advice that I would give to someone, particularly new to business, but even people who've been in business for a long time. You're not looking to sell. What you're looking to do is meet people where perhaps there can be an alliance opportunity. People who are maybe serving the same target market that you'd like to be serving or already are might be an opportunity for the two of you to collaborate. Chances that somebody who's gonna purchase your product or service is standing in a corner at a board of trade event is really slim, right? And there's a lot of, uh, of course, trading of business cards, yeah. left, right, and center yeah. um, at these things, and then you get on a list and you get 
uh, you know, yeah. newsletters. And of course, uh, now I'm playing the, you know, I'm, I'm involved, yeah. you know, of course I have a tip sheet that goes out. So people give me their business cards and if they want PR tips, you know, I do that. I, so yeah. I do, you know, everything that you're supposed to be doing in business, um, you know, the marketing and yep. whatnot. But some of that's not that effective. Well, because what it does is, is we've sort of got three phases in the Referral Institute that we have seen business relationships and referral relationships in particular move through. And the first phase is visibility. People right. have to understand who you are, what you do, and that you're looking to build your business. And they need to understand it quickly. Absolutely. And, yeah, Absolutely. Right. And that's what you can gain at all the networking events, is start to be visible as a business person in your industry. Okay. So that's invaluable. But then the next phase is building credibility. So that's where you're starting to go a little deeper in the relationship, where you're starting to build trust with the people that you meet. And you're not going to necessarily want to move that relationship from visibility to credibility with everybody, right? It's a little bit, and, and sometimes I take a chance saying this, a little bit like dating, right? Just because sure. you meet somebody for the first time doesn't necessarily mean you want to move into date two, right? True. Yeah. And, and biz building your business by referral is a similar relationship building process. You want to do business with people that you trust, business with people that you like, and business with people that you know the relationship is going to be mutually beneficial for the both of you. So start with visibility and then move to credibility. Now, how yeah. do you start from visibility and go to credibility? Credibility is that really delicate balance in a relationship where you start to feel like you trust someone. Right. And I think the easiest way to describe it for business people is do what you say you're going to do. Okay. Right? Right. If you do what you say you're going to do once you've met someone, be it send them something, be it introduce them to somebody, but if you said you're going to do something, do it. And that's the best way to build credibility within a relationship. Because otherwise, if you don't do what you say you're going yeah. to do, you can lose credibility. Yeah. And you'll go exactly in the opposite direction. Right. So very difficult then to keep the relationship moving up into the third phase, which is profitability. Okay. And that's where referral relationships start right. to develop, is when there's mutual benefit for both parties. And it's not necessarily giving business directly to and from each other. It might be opening up a new opportunity for somebody. Okay. It might be um, in your business, you might align yourself with a very specific marketing company that then you would be their preferred referral as a public relations person. So it's really building those relationships of trust and they become so incredibly valuable. Right. Now, you know, what are some of the biggest errors that people make? I mean, obviously, um, you know, going to a marketing event or a networking event to sell is not the right it's thing. It's a biggie. <laughs> but, but what else? Um, what are other some of the big mistakes that people make that you... I think, well, when it comes to referral marketing, I think a lot of people discount the relationships they already have. Right. Right? You go into business, say you're going into business and you're going to become a life insurance um, consultant. Right? And I think sort of you're trained to go and introduce yourselves to your friends and family and see whether or not you can build business from that perspective. And that's all part and parcel of the sales training in that particular industry. But then there's also all of the relationships that your parents have, right? The relationships that your grandparents might have, the business people they might know. Depending on who it is you'd like to have as your clients, when you start to define that, you'd be astonished how many people already know those types of people. And with just a simple introduction and a little training on how to introduce you, they can open up an entire target market for you. Sometimes people are afraid to ask uh, for referrals. They are. Um, they are. How do they get beyond that? I think if you're afraid to ask, to yeah. ask for a referral, the relationship's probably not where you hoped it would be. Okay. Right? So if you feel, and, and it happens to all of us, if you feel uncomfortable asking for a referral, probably the relationship isn't that at that high credibility level, right? Because when the relationship's at the high credibility level, you know that the person has a vested interest in helping you. How do you know that? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's almost it's one intuitive? of those intuitive things. We right. all have different clients in our lives who we really enjoy working with. Yeah. And others, not so much. Right. Right? So I think it's almost... Uh, the level of trust has just kind of hit that magic point where confidence and trust intersect and you just know that this relationship is probably going to be a good one for both of you. 
Now, Crystal, we're going to take a quick break, uh, and this means it's my Good to Know Minute uh, where you, my guests give their top success tip, and I know you've got a great one. A number of years ago, I took a leadership management course, and one of the things that we had to do is we had to come up with a personal mission statement, not a business mission statement, and I found it incredibly difficult because I had always thought that a mission statement was only business related. So when I really started to think about the type of business person that I am, it kind of led to the type of person I am. And one of the greatest thrills I get is being able to give the people I meet something of value. And when I started to think about that, it doesn't matter what business I'm in. If I can introduce somebody who, to someone who can help them, if I can share some information that's going to help them get to the next phase in their business or help them through a difficult time in their business, then that's really important for me. And that's probably the greatest fun that I have in my business. Well, thanks for that, Crystal. Welcome. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more with Crystal Wintels, who's here uh, with the Referral Institute Canada, talking about referral marketing. So stay right there. Welcome back to the show. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm joined by Crystal Wintels, who is the VP of uh, Referral Institute Canada. We're talking about referral marketing and how using referral marketing can help grow your business. And it's absolutely essential. I think that there's no question that referral marketing is where it's at. Completely. Now, something that's very interesting about you, Crystal, is that uh, you were once... Um, in the ad agency world, or you had your own advertising company. Uh, my previous guest uh, had a very similar journey. She was uh, worked in an ad agency, and one day, just, well, not one day, but over the course of time, felt something was off, and uh, uh, switched gears and started to work for a not-for-profit organization. Um, something similar happened to you. Yeah, my, mine was a little more financial-based. Right. One, uh, oh. one of the great clients that we had when we had our small advertising agency was Benson and & Hedges, and the Symphony of Fire was one of our oh. great big events that we did all the collateral material for. Yeah. Now, if you recall, and I think it was only important to me, cigarette companies were banned a number of years ago from sponsoring these kind of events. Right, yes, so I do remember. Yeah, so all of a sudden we knew coming down the road that we wouldn't have this big event anymore simply because Benson and Hedges wouldn't have it anymore. And I thought to myself, okay, I need to go out there and get some new business. And I hadn't really ever done that. I got a referral to the Benson and Hedges Symphony of Fire business and we worked on that business for four years. And all of the big clients that I had were referred. And so when I started to think about like, you can't pick up the phone and cold call and say, gee, I have a great idea for you, can I pitch you? Um, an advertising idea. It just doesn't work like that. Right. Um, so a client of mine suggested BNI, Business Networking International, and said this is a referral group. And um, her copywriter happened to belong to a chapter um, that used to meet at Young and Eglinton in Toronto and invited me to attend this chapter meeting. Now I've um, attended um, uh, a, a chapter meeting of BNI and I was really impressed actually with with how it, how it works. Um, it's a very structured uh, it business referral um, system or organization. Yep. yep. I, th I think there's two things that, that, that shock people about BNI. Right. The first one is that it's 7 o'clock in the morning. Yes. Which was <laughs> shocking to me. Especially when you have a dog. Uh, yeah. <laughs> which was <laughs> shocking to me. I remember, and I went in like December, so it's 7 o'clock in the morning, it's dark. It's at Young and Eglinton. I'm thinking, where are these people? Like, where right. are they meeting? And they were meeting upstairs as a, at a restaurant, and there was about 25 people in the room, and they were doing business. It was astonishing. And you're right, it's a very structured approach. Yeah. And a structured approach like that, there are some business people that quite like that and quite embrace that, but there's other business people who find that that structured approach might be a little bit too tight for them. And that's absolutely acceptable. What I liked about it is that I'm one of these people who likes to know there's a beginning, a middle, and an end to any meeting that I go to. And what I liked in 90 minutes, these people got a phenomenal amount of business done and they gave each other business opportunities. And right there, I was sold. So you are now a franchise owner. I am. Uh, of a BNI. I am. As a matter of fact, just past our 10th anniversary of owning what's called the Golden Horseshoe right. franchise, which is just west of the city of Toronto, and had the opportunity to purchase that franchise in 2001. Now, your motto is givers gain. Why? <laughs> 
One of the things about being in referral marketing is in order for it to work, yeah. we have to be willing to help people first. Right? Right. And, and folks that I've seen who have said, you know, referral marketing doesn't work for me or BNI doesn't work for me, it's usually because they're waiting for people to give them opportunities first. But there's that universal law called what goes around comes around. And if we don't drive reciprocity, then it's not going to come to us first. We have to be willing to help people. We have to be willing to get to know people so that we can figure out how to refer business to them. And once we begin to do that in a referral network like BNI, what goes around comes around. And reciprocity will start to come to all the members as well. Now, um, I mean, that's sort of uh, also saying sort of you help others achieve, Absolutely. you'll be successful. Or if you help somebody else get what they want, yep. you'll get what you want. Yep. Is that really the idea? Absolutely. And I think yeah. when Dr. Ivan Meisner is the gentleman who invented BNI, if you will, yep. 27 years ago, and his feeling was, I know enough people that are connected to great clients. If I help them get connected to my clients, then we're all going to be successful together. And so it was a real collaborative approach to business opportunity for each other. Right. Now, can you give an example of um, how someone um, really maybe turned a business around uh, to become hugely successful using referral marketing or B&I? All right. So yeah. uh, as you asked me this, I thought, yes, I can. So if she's <laughs> watching, sorry for not asking your permission first. This is a great story. She's been a member for about 10 years in one of yeah. our Oakville chapters of B&I. And when she started, she was a cleaning woman for okay. lack of a better discussion or description. She went into people's houses, but she particularly wanted to um, get more commercial cleaning opportunities. So this was 10 years ago. Very shy, very lovely, kind woman, but wasn't that confident standing up in front of a room full of people. Because a lot of people who don't do it for a living are really shy about right. any kind of public speaking. Sure, most so, people. Absolutely. Yeah. So she started to learn how to talk about her business, how to ask for referrals. She now has, I believe at last count, 10 years later, 12 people working for her. And they are almost solely residential cleaners. Oh, fantastic. So she's just gone into a huge growth mode. Do you love what you do? I do. I do. What's really cool about what I do is, is bringing people together and you never know where that opportunity might go. So when I'm able to connect a couple people that have um, sort of a need and a desire and they're able to work that out for each other, it's just a really nice feeling to be able to put those folks together. Now, um, do you have sort of um, any sort of last tips or advice uh, that you could offer, something that we haven't maybe touched on? I'm just going to bring it back a little bit to what we talked about before mm -hmm. the break. Have a look at who you know. Right. I think most people have great huge databases in either their Outlook or their sales management software and they really don't have a look at who they know and where that relationship is. And if you spent a few minutes or even an hour kind of nurturing that relationship or rekindling that relationship, you never know where the next opportunity might lie. But it's probably in your database right now. Well, that's some great advice, so thank you for that. Well, Crystal Wintels, I really enjoyed having you here today thank and uh, sharing some knowledge and advice uh, for my viewers. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Best of luck to you. Thanks very much. Well, for more information about upcoming shows or to contact me, you can visit the website at extraordinarywomentv.com. Just a few people I would like to thank. Um, Stu Skinner, uh, Jennifer Wu, and Cindy Miranda. If you are interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories have inspired you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner, and of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Shannon underscore Skinner for updates about the shows. See you soon.